In this tutorial, we'll show you how to fly an ILS to a landing on runway 26 right in Atlanta in a Boeing 737. We are on the Chipper 1 arrival and cleared to descend to 5,000 feet. Haynes is shown at 5,000 feet on the approach, so we can anticipate a turn outside of Haynes unless a further descent is given. During the descent we review the weather, set up the approach, and conduct a brief, covering the approach, actions in the event of a missed approach, and expected taxi route after clearing the runway. There are essentially two ways ATC will put us on final approach. They may assign a base turn, followed by a turn to intercept, or else clearing us to a point on the approach and clearing us for it. Clearing us to a point enables us to remain in LNAV and descend using VNAV until approaching the final approach fix, where we can switch to approach mode. Let's take a look at that first. Once we are cleared to Haynes, and for the ILS to 26 right, we select Haynes, execute the change, and ensure we are in LNAV. We then set the final approach fix altitude and select VNAV. In VNAV the aircraft will descend on a path which will meet altitude restrictions on the approach. We've set the final approach fix altitude, as being on an ILS we will use the glide slope to descend from the final approach fix. On approach, we keep a good check on other traffic. If we end up too close to the aircraft in front of us, it may result in a go-around if the traffic we're following doesn't clear the runway in time. Unless a speed has been assigned, we can extend flaps and slow the aircraft earlier if required to reduce the chances of going around. Once past bamboo, and with the final approach fix being the next point on the approach, we select approach mode. Once the glide slope is active, we set the missed approach altitude. Since we no longer intend to use the flight spoilers, we can arm them for landing. It is good practice to quickly consider actions in case of a missed approach. In real life this approach would most likely have resulted in a go-around due to the distance from the preceding traffic, however we can monitor the situation and be ready if a go-around is directed, or if we choose to go around ourselves. With high-speed turnoffs, aircraft should be able to quickly clear the runway on landing.
Let's now look at the difference if ATC assign a turn, rather than clearing us to a point on the approach. In this case, we extend the inbound course by selecting the point ahead of us and entering the inbound course if required. Once we press the right sixth button down, referred to as R6, the course appears as an extended line on the navigation display, we can then execute it. This enables us to intercept the course when cleared, rather than proceeding to a particular point. With the approach identified on the PFD, once cleared, we can select approach mode, however altitude restrictions outside of the final approach fix are not guaranteed when using the glide slope. We can monitor the altitude during the descent and can hand fly if necessary. Here you can see the difference when using the glide slope to where the path is, which is approximately 270 feet below us. Using the high-speed turnoff, we quickly clear the runway. From this runway we would use what's known as the Victor Loop to taxi to the terminal, so we'll not have to cross 26 left. Please subscribe to learn of future videos. Thank you.